Hi, this is Mark Ricketts, President and CEO of National Church Residences. I kind of feel like we're becoming uh, close friends here after doing approximately one of these videos per week for the past eight weeks. Uh, each one of them, I hope they're impactful. I'm trying to bring snippets of what I think are really important for you. Uh, and this week, uh, I want to communicate with you about the end of our hero pay, uh, which is to conclude uh, on May 23rd, which I believe is this Friday, but it's the end of this pay period. Uh, I'm going to start off by sharing with you how COVID-19 uh, infections have happened at our campuses. We're up to 119 total known cases of COVID-19 in our portfolio, 119. Uh, as a percentage of the seniors and the employees that work for us, we feel like we're winning. We're winning the percentage game. But of course, if you're one of the 119, that doesn't feel like a win at all. But it's less than 1% of our employee and resident population that have come down with COVID-19. Of that group, 119, 55 have fully recovered and either returned to work or returned to their life as a senior on a campus. 48 are still actively fighting the disease. And uh, sadly, I'm reporting that there are 16 people who have died of COVID-19. But when I look at 16 deaths out of 28,000 people, I'm looking at that and saying we've been blessed that because of the efforts you've gone through, uh, what you have done to protect the resident and yourself from the disease, we're winning the battle. Uh, our hot spots are still around Detroit. A lot of campuses there have had infections of two or more per campus, also around New Jersey. And if, um, sadly, I'm beginning to see data that shows one or two or three cases in locations we haven't seen before. But as a whole, the number of active cases today that we are, that we are monitoring the number is around 47, uh, and that is the decline since about April the 7th. So from April the 7th to today, we are on the downward side. What a blessing, but do not think it's over. Do not think it's over, and I want you all to continue to be vigilant with your usage of the personal protective equipment. In fact, I'd tell you to double down because society as a whole is letting go. We have to be the leaders in that case. We have to be the one to model that good behavior. And I ask you to continue to do that at home as well. Uh, you have just as much likelihood, more likelihood of getting it in the general public and bringing it in to the community. So I'm asking you to consider your personal behaviors as continuing the way you were coached the last 60 days. Uh, it's important, though, as I think about the conclusion of our hero pay, that $5 an hour rate, uh, that I now recognize, and maybe you do too, that the fight's not over. Uh, we have considered the spend to date. We're a little over $6 million that this organization has spent with hero pay, with additional time off, with the purchase of of uh, personal protective equipment with the additional staff needed to do uh, screening and the staff needed to do cleaning. We've added all that up. We're a little over $6 million, and it's beginning to create a crunch, not beginning it has. Uh, and so we've gone through this conclusion of saying, boy, what symbolic statement can we send, recognizing we can't continue with that large pay increase? And the decision we made as a team, and it's supported by our board of directors, was to advance a $2 an hour rate increase, uh, not five, but $2 an hour beginning May 24th through July 4th weekend, through the pay period ending July the 4th. Kind of a symbolic date, isn't it? As I recognize what the community is doing, the other employers taking it to $2 an hour is actually where they've been the last 60 days, and most are discontinuing this pay, so I still feel like we're leading the pack. But I think we're doing something that's financially viable for our organization. If we continue that five, $5 an hour rate increase, I think we would have put ourselves in harm's way. You deserve it. You're working hard. And I want you to know how much we appreciate the effort you're going through. Uh, what about the continuation of the time off should you show respiratory illness? That continues. The additional 10 days uh, that we are offering you in case you reveal symptoms or ask to go home because you've been exposed we're offering 10 more days of paid off. That has dwindled. Very few people are using that. That must tell me that, uh, that you're doing the appropriate protections. But in addition to that, we heard about vacation time, paid time off. You're not taking it. It's building up in your bank. And we have a requirement that that be used by December the 31st. We allow you to transfer over 80 hours or two weeks from December, December 31st to January to be used in the next calendar year. We recognize it can't be used. Many of you are saying you don't want to use it. So we're going to double the amount of carryover from two weeks to four weeks in December so you don't feel pressure to use it in this period of time, which is critical time in our mission service for seniors. So we're going to allow that to carry over. And so next year, if you have next year's two weeks and this year's two weeks, you can take as much as four weeks off next year. feels like the right thing to do. So we are offering that to all employees. 
Um, I also want you to, to know how much we appreciate uh, the attention you're giving to caring, to, uh, caring for our seniors, uh, I'll say isolation needs. There's a big effort on your part to make sure seniors are engaged with you interpersonally, even though you might be donning a mask. Maybe you're calling them, maybe you're engaging them in fun activities that are uh, not face-to-face -face or person-to-person. -person. That effort is hard to measure uh, in any tangible way, but it's not hard for the people who are receiving that personal attention. I'd ask you to double down there, to think about being more intimate, more communicative, um, more making more contact with seniors because the next 60 days there's going to be an incredible desire to break our quarantine and we need to hold on to that as long as we can. I'm not sure when the pressure will get so great that we can't uh, resist the opportunity to reopen. I'm not sure when that'll happen but in the meantime I need for you to fill the gap and you're doing it. You're doing it. I hear it and see it all the time. Thank you for the, the care you're giving to this wonderful mission. Uh, and doing it with excellence that transforms lives.